back to the next next video in the tutorial. This one covers the DirectX toolkit. So where we left off was we had this window um, and we also had error handling with our macro that we made in our utility class. This right here. <clears throat> okay, so the DirectX toolkit. First off, here, here it is. This is where you go to get it. Um, DirectX tk.coplex.com um, now what DirectX Toolkit is, is basically, it's a, um, well first off it's supported for basically all the platforms um, from Windows 7 um, up through Windows 8 and even store apps. And what it does is it uh, wraps basically XNA functionality for DirectX 11. Um, so sprite patches, for sprite fonts, effects, permanent batch model, common states, vertex type. DDS texture loader and screen grab, simple math. Um, so, uh, what you can do is with this, um, we can basically easily do 2D um, and even some basic 3D rendering without having to worry about some complex graphics stuff like computing our own shaders. Okay. So what we're going to do is you're going to download this um, and extract it to somewhere. I already have it extracted somewhere, so I'm just going to go to where I have it. But as you can see, there's all these different project files and solution files. So what you're going to do is you're going to locate where you have that. Now mine happens to be here. And what you're going to do is you're going to go and right click your solution add existing project you're going to locate where that was and see how you have these projects to choose from so since we're using Visual Studio 2012 we're going to cho uh, choose the DirectX TK desktop 2012 now if you were doing um, Windows 8 specific development um, for store apps, you'd choose this one. If you're doing store apps for Windows 8.1, you'd choose this one. Or if you're doing Windows Phone 8 development. Um, and if you're doing, um, if you're using Visual Studio 2012, uh, I mean 2010, you choose this. And that's if you have the SDK for 8.1, but you're using Visual Studio 2010. Um, so we'll just take this. We'll add it. So now, now it's included with all its source. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to right click our project and do references. And then we're going to add a new reference and make sure we check this. Okay. And then for um, the configuration properties. What we're going to do is we're going to go to um, C++ directories and we're going to edit the include and we're going to go navigate to the include right here folder for the DirectX toolkit and now it should be included fine. So to test this we're going to go in WinMain. We're going to try and include Sprite Patch. So clearly it notices that we have it. Um, and we're going to make ourselves a um, Sprite Patch object. So we're going to include another thing um, above these two. We're going to include memory. Now what memory has in it is something called a unique pointer. And unique pointer are basically just um, smart pointers. A unique pointer, when, once it goes out of um, out of scope, it auto deletes itself. So, and we're gonna pass it a sprite batch pointer. Sprite batch. But as you notice, it says that it doesn't know where what per sprite batch is. That's because it's located in the DirectX namespace. See? So what they did with the DirectX toolkit is they wrapped everything in the namespace um, DirectX. So if we go into the sprite patch header, 
see namespace directx. Now that's the good thing about this, you, you can look at all the source if you want. It's not it's not hidden from you. Now to set a unique pointer, unique pointers can't be set with just an equals. You can't just go like this. You can't just be sprite patch equals. You have to actually do dot reset. So you have to reset what is actually stored in the unique pointer. And what we're going to do is we're going to store a new directx sprite patch. And what this takes in, as you can see, it takes in a device context. That's where we're going to pass in our immediate context. And um, hmm. Wait. Okay. Okay. That was a derp. Um. This is already a pointer. So yeah, I don't know why I did that. I guess I'm I'm in the habit of of doing putting the pointer. This actually counts as a pointer. So you. That's why it was giving us a, it was trying, it was casting this as a, a pointer to a pointer when that's not what we want. Um, we want just a pointer. Okay, so <clears throat> next, um, now that we have our sprite batch, if you've ever used XNA before, it's pretty simple. Um, we just call on, on our sprite batch, we call begin. And end, and then here's where you draw sprites and anything else. Draw sprites, fonts, etc. So that's what you do in between here. Um, so let's draw a simple sprite. Um, so to do this, what we basically need to do is. Well, let's first see what it takes to draw. So we need a resource view, a shader resource view, um, and basically just a position, which would be an XM float or a vector two, which is stored in simple math. So first, we need you know we need to get an image that we're going to render. So open up something like Paint.net. If it ever opens, okay, here we go. So what I'm going to do is resize this to uh, 64 by 64. And I'm going to delete the background so it's transparent. And I'm just going to drag a box, like so. And then I'm just going to fill it with some sort of color that's bright and easy to see. There we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to save this as a direct draw surface and I'm going to save it um, might as well save it right to our project folder so go into tutorials and we're just gonna save it right here I'm gonna call it test save um, just hit OK right off the bat doesn't matter um, so now that that now that exists, so it should exist in our um, folder. So there's our my DDS file, my direct draw surface. <clears throat> so next, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create a shader resource view pointer. To a texture and what we're going to do is we're going to do um, we're going to um, have to import the DDS texture loader um, so now that we have these two things right underneath here so this we basically create sprite patch here we're going to rendering and what we're going to do is we're going to call um, directx create dds texture from file 
Now again, this this uh, returns an H result, so we can actually um, wrap that. But first, we're going to have to uh, pass in the our device. So we're going to pass in the device. We're going to pass in a the file name. So it's test DDS. Now the L basically just turns this string into a wide character string for Unicode. Um, that's how this how this uh, method was defined. See const w char t right underneath my pointer. Um, that's a wide character string. Next is the resource which we're not actually storing in, and then this is the shader view. So that should be good. Yep. Um, so now what should happen is if we go sprite patch, draw, we can pass in our texture, and then we can pass in a, um, a position. But what we should do is we should include simple math, and simple math um, defines some basically uh, Math constructs like vector twos, vector threes, vector fours, quaternions, etc. for use. And what we'll do is we can pass in a vector two, um, right, direct x, vector two. Oh, oops, actually, simple math, vector two, um, 100 by 100. So if we run this, this should work. There we go. There's our image that we imported. It's the little cube that we made. It's more like a rectangle. Um, which is kind of weird because I'm pretty sure my canvas size was 64 by 64. It's strange. <clears throat> Um, okay, so, yeah, so it, it works. Um, now fonts are a little bit, uh, more complex, so I'll show that as well. Um, fonts are basically sprite fonts, so if we go here to the documentation, I can show you that with sprite fonts, sprite fonts basically use the sprite font files. Now, sprite font files are done using the make sprite font. Um, this makes sprite font executable. So what you need to do is you're going to need to download that. So it's also in downloads. It's here, make sprite font tool. You just download this. If you open it, it has the exe right there. Now, I already have it, and I have it in my C drive. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up command prompt and I'm just going to cd into C <clears throat> and what we're going to do is cd into a make sprite font and then we're going to call make sprite font dot exe so then what it does is let's go back to the documentation it takes the a string that contains the installed on your computer font type. So the font needs to be installed. Um, so I have one called in, in consolata, but um, you might want actually let's just use a, a standard one like Arial. <clears throat> and then what you do is you uh, declare the path. So let's say I want it to be in um, users um, at desktop um, and uh, I'm going to call it Arial uh, sprite font and then font size we're going to set it to have 18 and if we run 
what it should do is you see it says importing Arial. It crops the glyph borders and then packs glyphs into a sprite sheet and then pre-multiplies the alpha and then it pops out the sprite font. So if I go to my desktop or actually just go out here and close that. See this Arial sprite font file? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, copy it. We're going to go back into the DirectX toolkit. I'm just going to paste it right here. So now we have our test DDS and our sprite font file. So go back in here. We're going to <clears throat> then, by the way, if I'm moving fast, you can always head back and rewatch the video. Um, this, by the way, is how you run executables. You have to run them from command prompt. So, um, that's that. Uh, what we're going to do is we have to create a sprite font. So, what I'm going to do is do std unique pointer. Now, it doesn't know what sprite font is yet because we haven't imported it. So, sharp include sprite font. So there it goes. Now we have a sprite font. Now, same thing, we have to create that should be just object. And for this, we'll do sprite font dot uh, dot reset new directx sprite font. And this takes the device and the file name. So it takes the device and a long uh, wide character string to the file name. Now ours is arial.sprite font. So there we go. So now what we can do is we can call um, um, sprite font draw string we pass in our um, sprite batch so we have to actually pass in our sprite batch now to do this is you have to actually call get because you can't just pass the the unique pointer you have to actually pass the pointer now get returns the pointer from the unique pointer um, then we can pass in a uh, what we want to say so let's just say hello world and then a position which we can just do direct x simple math vector 2 um, 300 by 300. Okay, so if we run this, it should um, display perfectly fine. There you go. So now we have fonts rendering. Now, um, I'm pretty sure this cannot be, this is just a test. See if it can be outside of the sprite patch, begin and end. If it's just redundant. Nope, it's not redundant. So there you go. Control Z. Put that back. Um, okay, sadly, none of these return H results. So you can't really do that. But there you go. So that's how you draw strings using sprite fonts. So you build them with the make for sprite font tool. Um, it's pretty quick and easy. Um, and then you add them to your project. See this Arial sprite font? Um, and then you just render using a string. So that's the basics of using um, the DirectX toolkit to do um, sprite rendering using a sprite patch and font rendering using a sprite font. Um, and remember, you gotta always have the shader resource view. And oh, and when you leave, of course, you wanna safe release on that texture. So just for good practice. These auto delete themselves, so it's no problem. Actually, the way you can tell this is see that second parameter there, std default delete. It it defaults to deleting it when it goes out of scope. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned for the next tutorial where, where I'll cover wrapping the sprite rendering into a sprite um, class. <laughs>